Hello, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Thanks for joining us on Turner Classic Movies. If you've been watching TCM since the start of April, you know we're celebrating the 100th anniversary of Warner Brothers with a month-long marathon of the studio's films. To further mark the occasion, we've partnered with our good friends at the Film Foundation, the organization dedicated to film restoration and founded by filmmaker Martin Scorsese, to showcase 10 Warner Brothers movies that have been newly preserved or restored. The drama we have up next is one of those 10. It's from 1953. Raoul Walsh directs James Cagney in A Lion is in the Streets. A couple of questions you might be asking. One, with so many great Warner Brothers movies, how exactly were these 10 films in particular chosen? And two, what was involved in restoring them? Our introduction to A Lion is in the Streets comes from two women heavily involved in the process and fully equipped to answer those questions. Here are Robin Sclaren, who manages the Warner Brothers Library, and Daphne Dents, a film archivist at the studio, as they bring you Jimmy Cagney and a lion is in the streets. Hello, I'm Robin Sclaren. Hi, my name is Daphne Dents. Thank you for joining me for the 1953 film, A Lion is in the Streets. And now, now let's get rolling. I manage the film and TV library here at Warner Brothers Discovery. I oversee um, a team of mastering and restoration specialists. And for the 100th anniversary, the new masters that we made are so beautiful. So when we were looking at what titles we wanted to choose to restore, the first piece of criteria was what titles were still in standard definition. And a lot of those titles in standard definition, the materials were in less than ideal shape. And then we started looking at, okay, if this is the WB 100th anniversary, let's look at an expanse of titles. Let's look at the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s. Let's look at a combination of different directors, of different genres. Been expecting you. Of the 10 films that we restored, A Lion is in the Streets stands out. All you gotta know is what place to push to get what note. Then pretty soon, everybody's dancing to your tune. This specific title had lots of challenges. The first being that we scanned Technicolor three strip negatives, and one of the three strips was actually shrunken. There was also some blue streaking, lots of dirt. It was pretty tough. It took time to recombine the material and then the colorist went through shot by shot, scene by scene. It was difficult from the restoration side, but also from the colorist side. So when we can scan those separations and put them into the computer, we have the full color gamut. And so we're able to make images that are really, really beautiful. This is a battle of life and death we're fighting. And if I'm right, what we're doing is no more wrong than stealing the aching sweat off of men year after year after year. A Lion is in the Streets, directed by Raoul Walsh and starring James Cagney, Barbara Hale, and Anne Francis, was based on the 1945 novel of the same name, which follows the rise of a magnetic, tough salesman from the bayou as he supports a group of sharecroppers in their fight against their corrupt boss. I'm calling you a thief. Hank. And come to think of it, not just an ordinary thief, a blood-sucking thief. A Lion is in the Streets is one of four collaborations at Warner Brothers between the director Raoul Walsh and James Cagney. The other films being The Strawberry Blonde, White Heat, and The Roaring Twenties. Here's a film that's in Technicolor, yet is still a bit bleak, a bit dirty, a bit brawly. The juxtaposition between the story and Cagney's magnetic, larger-than-life performance and the technicolor of it all is just phenomenal. And I think what's so fascinating about James Cagney is that he could play a psychotic gangster like in White Heat, or he could be a song and dance man. Walsh brought something out of Cagney where his characters were never one note. They were all different layers. Now all he can do is pray. Down on your knees! He is a complicated character that people want to really root for, and he's both good and bad in the same frame. And the female characters are so fun. Although the women in the film are not the prime focus, they still have a powerful presence. This is a political drama released 70 years ago, and it's still relevant today. Never know that I could love anybody or anything so much. 
On behalf of Turner Classic Movies and Warner Brothers Discovery, I'm Robin Sklarin. I'm Daphne Dents. Thank you for joining me for A Lion is in the Streets. A Lion is in the Streets marked the last of four films James Cagney starred in for director Raoul Walsh, all either made or distributed by Warner Brothers. Their most successful collaboration, White Heat from 1949, was Cagney's favorite. He had contract squabbles with Warners throughout his career, and after his triumph with Yankee Doodle Dandy in 1942, Cagney decided to leave the studio, set up his own production company. But that company struggled, one reason why Cagney agreed to return to Warner Brothers to make White Heat. Cagney made two more pictures for the studio before leaving again, returning only for occasional one-off projects, including A Lion is in the Streets, which was produced by his own company before it folded, subsequently distributed by Warners. The film was released as the studio system was beginning to lose its grip on the production and distribution of movies, which came just as television was starting to cut deeply into the profits of the studios. As was the case with other studios, to compete with TV, Warner Brothers used marketing tricks and emerging production technologies like 3D and Cinemascope to try to lure Americans off their couches, away from their televisions, and into movie houses. When possible, the studios turned to controversial material to win back audiences. Such was the case with our next film, director Aaliyah Kazan's adaptation of Tennessee Williams' play A Streetcar Named Desire, featuring Marlon Brando delivering arguably the most influential film performance of the 20th century. And Streetcar is up next on TCM.